Now let's take a look at how you would use PagerDuty with ServiceNow. I'll be covering what you get out of the box after enabling the integration, followed by an incident workflow demo. The decision that you're going to need to make is how you want PagerDuty and ServiceNow to be mapped. Which ServiceNow incidents do you want triggering PagerDuty incidents? In other words, what criteria needs to be met? And when a PagerDuty incident is created, how does that need to be categorized in ServiceNow? You can accomplish this by two different ways. One is mapping ServiceNow assignment groups to a PagerDuty escalation policy and a PagerDuty service. Or if you need more flexibility, PagerDuty allows you to map a CMDB configuration item from ServiceNow to a PagerDuty service and a ServiceNow assignment group to a PagerDuty escalation policy. Here we're looking at the settings from the ServiceNow console. While you don't have to change any of these configurations for the integration to work, here are other PagerDuty settings that you can configure to match your critical incident workflow. We had just talked about mappings, which you can select from assignment groups to PagerDuty or configuration items and assignment groups from ServiceNow mapping into PagerDuty. PagerDuty also makes it really easy to work from within the ServiceNow console. We want to make sure whether you're a responder or a member of the NOC that you have PagerDuty action buttons enabled so that you can add a conference bridge, add additional responders, or send out status notifications to stakeholders that need to be aware of what could potentially impact them. You can visit our integration guide for more details. The link is available in the chat. Now for the demo, I'll walk you through two scenarios. For the first one, we'll create an incident within the ServiceNow console, and we'll watch as it creates a PagerDuty incident and the synchronization that takes place. Second, we'll kick off an API call from any tool directly into PagerDuty, which will create a PagerDuty incident. And then we'll go into the ServiceNow console and show you the details of the synchronization. So let's start by creating an incident. Let's say that we just got a call from the engineering department and something happened with one of their applications. As you're filling out the ServiceNow incident, you put in the caller's name, you select the configuration item and the assignment group. We've determined that it's a P1, so we're marking that with a high impact and a high urgency. We put in a short description. We can put in a description if we want. And we save this incident. As soon as we fill out this incident, a call goes out from ServiceNow into PagerDuty to create the PagerDuty incident. And then you'll see that incident ID come back and populate into the PagerDuty incident field. We try to make it really easy. So if you did want to go into the PagerDuty incident, you can open it up from a link that can be a part of your ServiceNow form. Now, just imagine as this PagerDuty incident gets created, you might be getting a phone call. From the mobile app, you can do all of the activity that I'm going to show you on the user interface. And if you come in here and you realize that this is a important issue to take care of, you may want to acknowledge it. If you realize that this is an incident that you don't necessarily have the expertise in and you need to escalate it to the next layer of your escalation policy, very easy to do. Maybe you don't want to own this incident at all and it needs to go to a totally different team. You can reassign this again from the buttons at the top or from your mobile app. You can also add additional responders. So let's say that there are some additional teams or additional departments that need to be involved. Very easy to find the network team and the database team and possibly the security team if you need to bring in more than just yourself to work on this issue. In addition, you can add conference bridges, URLs for meetings, and it's all pretty easy with a few clicks of the button or a few touches on your phone. If you find that you're doing those same four or five steps over and over again, why not automate them? And that's what we call running a play. So you can choose to run a play and add those additional teams as well as a bridge or a conference room and send out a status update to any teams or executives that need to know what's going on without being blindsided. You may need to send out a message to customer support so that they know that there's going to be some more phone calls coming in. You may need to send out a message to your executives or the team leads or managers so that they're aware that there's an incident taking place, but you don't necessarily want them to participate in fixing what that problem is. I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge this incident. 
So you'll see that I now have an acknowledged status. The status of the PagerDuty incident went from triggered to acknowledged. Let's say that I am looking at some of the details that came across from ServiceNow, and I realize that this is really a P2. I'm also going to go ahead and put a note in, letting anybody else who takes a look at this incident or my ServiceNow incident, the reason why I changed it to a P2. If I wanted to go back to the ServiceNow incident, we do create a link on the PagerDuty incident to make it very easy to flip back and forth between the two solutions if you need to. Back in the ServiceNow incident, I can see here that the priority did change from a one to a two. It's now been assigned to myself because I acknowledged it. And I see that the state changed from new to in progress once I acknowledged the incident. Also, all of the activities are now going to be tracked inside of the ServiceNow activities. So I can see here my note the priority change, when it was acknowledged. And the nice thing is that we track this and bi-directionally sync it between PagerDuty and ServiceNow so that no matter if your responders are coming into ServiceNow or if they're coming into PagerDuty, they'll see everything that's going on without losing any of that information. Now, if you are somebody who likes to work in the ServiceNow interface, you'll notice up at the top all of the PagerDuty actions. And if you remember when we took a look at the settings, these were options you can either check the boxes and have them enabled and show up, or you can keep them off of the form. What this allows you to do is to come into the ServiceNow incident and either add a conference bridge, add additional responders, like what I had shown you in the PagerDuty interface, run those response plays, send status updates, resolve, update, or even delete. So if I wanted to add a conference bridge, I can pick and choose which conference bridge this particular incident needs to be a part of. Whatever I select will now be added to my incident here on the ServiceNow side, as well as synchronize over into the PagerDuty side. This allows me to add additional responders. And when I add those additional responders, I can send a message to them. But now when they get notified from PagerDuty, they'll be able to see that conference bridge or any URL that I have added. So let's go through scenario two, where we have a tool automatically send an alert into PagerDuty, which will then create an incident in ServiceNow. So here's an incident coming in. I'm now getting a notification. I'm going to go ahead and decline the phone call and instead go into the mobile app. And I can do this either from the push notification that we had seen just before the call coming in. And as I come into the mobile app, I see that there's a long history length, possible stuck transaction. And because this is coming directly from the monitoring tool, it will send as much context as I had configured to come in. I can see charts. I can see graphs. I can send in links to either get to that dashboard or maybe additional information that's somewhere out in my network. We support both Android as well as iOS. You can see that from my phone, I can acknowledge or resolve from the bottom buttons. I'm on an Android. I also have an option to go into more. More is where I can do all of the same actions that we saw earlier from within the web UI. I can run a play. I can add a priority. Let's say that I want this to be a P1. I may want to escalate this. I may need to reassign this. I can add additional responders. I can add notes if I want as well. Some of the other things that you can do from your phone as well as the web UI is run a custom action. And a custom action is throwing a web hook out to another solution that you may be using in your environment. I happen to have mine set up with Rundeck. And this allows me to throw a custom action to my Rundeck server where I have multiple jobs and workflows that have already been set up. If you find that this particular type of incident on an application or on a server always requires you to run diagnostics or check log files, why not have that automated so that instead of logging into that other console requiring a username, a password, and permissions, why not be able to do it from a single touch of your phone? If I run my Rundeck memory utilization here, 
I'll also do a check disk utilization, just so we can see some of that information come across. And from my phone, in my timeline, I'll also see these results coming back as a note, and I'll show you this on the web as well as the ServiceNow incident. Everything that I am doing is going to be tracked in my PagerDuty timeline, similar to how all of the timeline information is now tracked into the ServiceNow activities. And again, one other piece just to show, we have our status updates, so we can send back and forth information to groups of stakeholders that need to be aware of the issue going on. And we can do that again from the phone, the web UI, or our ServiceNow console. So back in my PagerDuty interface, I can come over to my incident that I just took a look at. I'll go ahead and acknowledge this here since I didn't do that from, from my phone. So I go from a pending status to an acknowledged or engaged status. The status has changed up at the top. I see all of the results from the diagnostics in my notes, like I had mentioned, as well as the timeline. And if I want, I can come over to my ServiceNow incident by just clicking on the link that was created, because again, we have these services synchronized into ServiceNow. I don't have a caller automatically filled in. I could have PagerDuty as the caller automatically filled in, or I could have whatever makes sense in my workflow or have that something filled out later on down the road. You'll see that the title from the PagerDuty incident comes across into the short description. All of the other fields that we had discussed before, state is now in progress, priority matches the priority that I had set in my PagerDuty incident, and it's assigned to me because I'm the person who acknowledge this. All of the other details and information are going to be listed in the ServiceNow activity, again, so that we synchronize all of the data going back and forth. One last piece that I will do from the PagerDuty incident is resolve the incident. So once I'm finished, we've fixed what's going on, I'll go ahead and choose to resolve this. I can put in whatever resolution note that I want. And the nice thing is that the resolution note that you enter in the PagerDuty incident will synchronize to the resolution notes in the ServiceNow incident. So I can resolve this. I'll want to make sure and check my ServiceNow incident to see that it has also been resolved. So my state has changed to resolve. And if I look at my resolution information, the resolution note that I had put into my PagerDuty incident now translates and copies over into my ServiceNow incident. To wrap things up, your initiation point can be humans, ServiceNow, or tools directly sending alerts into PagerDuty. Both platforms will synchronize with each other so that all teams will have the necessary information to manage their critical incidents using the interface of their choice.